Good morning. It's Friday, October 4th. I'm Jasmine Anderson. A big day in the deadly chokehold case against a Marine veteran from Long Island. West Islip's Daniel Penny was in court yesterday for a pretrial hearing. He's charged in the killing of Jordan Neely on a Manhattan subway in 2023. Today, a judge is expected to rule on whether police interrogation and body camera video from the scene can be used in court. More than 200 animals found living in deplorable conditions in a Woodbury home. The Nassau SPCA was on the scene yesterday removing the animals from the home. The house is, un we can't even walk around. It's a horror house. It's, uh, there's hundreds of birds in the house. Officials have not identified the home's owner. Only on Newsday, fears of more water main breaks in Baldwin. On Monday, for the second time since June, a water main burst beneath a Baldwin neighborhood. That again left Winona Road residents without running water and unable to flush toilets. I'm worried about it happening again because it, it happened uh, that first time right here. Uh, and then this time it's supposedly a different section of the pipe. What they are actually saying is that it's probably the whole line that needs to be replaced. Listen to this. A civil engineering professor at Stony Brook University says Nassau County's 80 year old public water infrastructure is approaching its design life. The ports are back open this morning with the dock worker strike on hold. The union representing 45,000 striking workers at ports from Maine to Texas reached a deal to suspend the strike until January 15th. The disruption could have potentially crippled the U.S. economy, leading to higher prices and retail shortages during the holiday season. The three-day strike had already triggered panic buying, leading to short supplies of paper towels and toilet paper here on the island. It's now been a week since Hurricane Helene devastated parts of the South. The death toll has soared to more than 200, with many still missing. Here on the island, communities are coming together to do what they can to help the victims. The Lindenhurst Fire Department is collecting supplies. When we had Hurricane Sandy, everyone helped us. And as soon as I saw this on the news, I packed up my car and I came over. And I hope it helps them. It definitely will. You can find more places to bring supplies on Newsday.com. Click Get More below the Newsday TV video box. Three more West Nile virus cases have been confirmed on Long Island. So far this year, the Suffolk County Health Department has reported 19 cases, the second most since the county began reporting cases in 2000. Alec Baldwin's controversial Rust movie now has a premiere date. The Massapequa Natives movie will make its debut at the Cambridge International Film Festival in Poland in November. The festival will dedicate the screening to the memory of the cinematographer killed by a prop gun on set in 2021. Simply amazing. The Mets have moved on to the NLDS after a thrilling comeback. Three and one to Alonzo. Williams sets. Here's the pitch. Swing and a fly ball to right field. Pretty well hit. Freelick back at the wall. He jumps. It's gone. He did it. He did it. Pete Alonzo with the most memorable home run of his career. Pumps his fist. And what could have been his last game as a Met? Pete Alonzo hit a go-ahead three-run home run in the ninth inning to lift the Mets past the Brewers. 4-2 to two was the final last night in Milwaukee. The Mets now face the Phillies. That series starts tomorrow afternoon in Philadelphia. This was a scene in Queens last night. Thousands of fans packed City Field to watch the Mets' Milwaukee miracle last night. The Yankees are getting ready for their ALDS showdown with the Royals. Eric Boland is in the Bronx with what the Bombers need to do to win it. The Yankees kick off the Division Series Saturday night at Yankee Stadium against the Kansas City Royals, a young and upcoming team uh, that really blossomed this year after losing over 100 games a season ago. And uh, Kansas City really turned it around this season, uh, won a wild card spot in the American League, and then upset 
the defending champion AL East Baltimore Orioles in that best of three wild card, and that puts the Royals right here at Yankee Stadium to take on the Yankees on Saturday night. Biggest concern for the Yankees when it comes to Kansas City is that tough Royals starting rotations with Cole, Cole Reagans and Seth Lugo at the top, both pitchers who have given uh, the Yankees trouble um, at times on the mound. Uh, the Kansas City bullpen, a lot of question marks there, uh, particularly at the back end. But again, uh, the starting rotation, big challenge from the Yankees' perspective. The lineup, it's a good, solid top-to-bottom lineup led by Bobby Witt Jr., who pushed Aaron Judge in the MVP race all season long. Judge probably will win that award going away, but Bobby with uh, tremendous shortstop, uh, tremendous lineup presence, um, and obviously the Yankees will be uh, committed to not allowing Witt, who has hit the Yankees well all season long, even as the Yankees went 5-2 and two against Kansas City. Uh, we're going to be determined that uh, Witt doesn't beat them and that somebody else in the Kansas City lineup does. But again, concern number one for the Yankees, those top two guys in the Royals rotation, Cole Reagan and Seth Lugo. It all kicks off. Saturday night at Yankee Stadium as the Yankees try to qualify for and win their first World Series since 2009. Reporting from Yankee Stadium, this is Eric Boland for Newsday TV. Hoping for the best, Eric. Thank you. Read more about the Yankees and the Mets playoff runs on Newsday.com. Click Get More below the Newsday TV video box. Hollywood in the Hamptons, a big film festival gets underway today. Rafer Guzman has a preview. Hey everyone, the Hamptons International Film Festival is here. I'm Rafer Guzman, film critic for Newsday. I'm going to tell you about four very buzzy titles at the festival. They are Honora, Conclave, Emilia Perez, and Saturday Night. My name is Lorne Michaels. I'm the producer of Saturday Night. The whole night? Yeah, the whole night. Chevy Chase, Gilda Radner. Can you believe SNL has been going for 50 seasons? Jason Reitman directs Saturday Night, which takes us behind the scenes of the very first episode in 1975. Back then, Chevy Chase, Gilda Radner, and John Belushi were largely unknown, and so are most of these actors. SNL premiered on Friday, October 11th, and so will this movie. It plays at the Hamptons, October 11th as well, and that's where you'll find Jason Reitman in person. Next up is Anora, an exotic dancer from Brighton Beach, elopes with a Russian playboy, much to the dismay of his wealthy parents. I am telling you, you do not know this guy. Anya? <laughs> it's a frog marriage, and we're getting a in an old ASAP. Anora is the latest sex work comedy from Sean Baker, who gave us Tangerine and Red Rocket. And based on early buzz, this low-budget movie could be the Oscar frontrunner for Best Picture. Anora plays at the Hamptons October 11th and in theaters October 18th. Here's another Oscar contender, Conclave. The Pope is dead. The throne is vacant. Ray Fiennes plays Cardinal Lawrence. He's assigned to find a new pope, but the old pope had a secret and Lawrence is about to find out. Conclave has gotten rave reviews on the festival circuit and strong Oscar buzz for Fiennes. It's at the Hamptons October 12th and in the theaters October 25th. Finally, here's an unusual movie, Emilia Perez. Not because you, uh, <laughs> you are pretty. It's about a Mexican drug cartel leader who is seeking gender confirmation surgery. It's a French film, but it's in Spanish, and it's a musical. Its star is Carla Garcia Gascon, who could become the first openly transgender actress to win an Oscar. Emilia Perez is at the Hamptons October 6th, in theaters November 1st, and on Netflix November 13th. This is the 32nd edition of the Hamptons International Film Festival and one of its longest with 11 days of movies. There are also live interviews with Demi Moore, Liev Schreiber, and Andrew Garfield. For tickets and info and the full lineup, go to Newsday.com and click Get More below the Newsday TV video box. I'm Rafer Guzman. Feed Me is brought to you by PC Richard & Son.
We're touring some of the top 50 restaurants on Long Island. Andy Berlin takes us to a few in today's Feed Me TV. Feed Me's annual list of best restaurants is out. And this year we're doing 50, the best of the best. Two of the restaurants that I'm really excited about this year, Yota Ramen in Mineola. Ramen is really popular, but this place really stands out. The two owners, Sanantuk Tyler Lamwe and Pat Boone, are Thai nationals by birth, fans of Japanese culture by choice, and they just do a fantastic job with the decor and the ramen, which features a 16 hour tonkatsu broth that they're stirring every 10 minutes just to make sure that it's right. They have Japanese curry, sashimi. They have this really fun dessert, a matcha parfait, kind of whimsical sweet treat at the end of your meal. And the other restaurant that I've completely fallen in love with this year is La Mesa in Massapequa. It has a beautiful market with artisanal products inside and and everything on the deli. They're like fresh beets and, and pickled red onions, delicious looking fried pork. <laughs> the restaurant is fusion, Salvadoran and Filipino flavors. I never would have thought that Filipino food had so much in common with Central American food. This is a sleeper hit, but my favorite thing on the menu, the Honduran baleado, almost like a breakfast taco, but you can get it with the Filipino longanisa sausage, so you make a perfect fusion of the Central American and Filipino foods and it's also one of the best baleadas you can get on Long Island. For the entire list go to newsday.com slash top 50. This is Andy Berlin for Newsday TV. Now I'm hungry Andy. Thank you for more on Newsday's top 50 restaurants. Go to newsday.com click get more below the Newsday TV video box. More than 70 suspicious deaths have gone unsolved on Long Island over the last 48 years. Newsday investigates how law enforcement is trying to bring closure to victims' families. The Forgotten, an exclusive Newsday investigation, coming soon at Newsday.com. Checking out your hyperlocal weather, we're in for a pretty nice Friday. Let's talk about it. Let's check out your day planner. Mostly cloudy out there today. Highs in the upper 60s. Now tomorrow, a mix of sun and clouds with highs in the mid 70s. Here's a look at your seven day forecast. Long Island weather is brought to you by PTRC. I'm Jasmine Anderson. Happy Friday, everyone. Thank you so much for watching.